FlexLend is a dApp on Solana which allows you to earn interest on your USDC, USDT, or other assets such as Sol at a higher rate because it goes via different dApps to work out which has the highest dApp. This product is properly genius, so I'm going to talk you through it and show you how to use it in this tutorial. So firstly, here we are at Twitter. As per normal, always go and double check. That is the right Twitter handle. So this is at FlexLend. Lend different is their motto. A nice Steve Jobs reference there, which I love. And we'll go through this tweet very, very quickly. You can basically see that the lend rates on different dApps are very, very different. So Sol Lend at the moment is 10%. So if you put in $1,000, if you wanted to, you could allow it to go to a different dApp if this spiked, thereby you're earning more USDC. Then if MarginFi spiked, it would go here. Then if Drift all of a sudden went up to 20%, it could go here. And every hour it can do this. So I'm not entirely sure why, but there's been a massive spike on Solend protocol and it spiked to 324.94% APY on February the 16th. Now it of course came down from there and then it was sitting at 35%. But due to whatever was happening on that dApp, there was a huge amount of demand. And of course, the price went nice and high. So as an example, where this really has product market fit is catching these spikes automatically, right? So Solane Protocol spiked to 324%, which of course means they need a lot more liquidity because there's too many borrowers coming out. And that is clearly not sustainable. But if you can get in there and get some of that yield for, say, a few hours, then that might take two weeks to get that yield in, say, Camino or Drift. So that's where the product market fit really is. So let's dive into the dApp. Here is FlexLens website, flexlens.fi. We'll go and connect our wallet, connect Phantom and jump quickly into Phantom. Just a reminder, my suggestion is to have different wallets for different things. So this is a dedicated wallet, but it'd probably be under your DeFi wallet. Nevertheless, this is FlexLend. We've got a few different tokens in here and we've got some USDC and some USDT and some Sol as well. Now down here, you can see I have two active deposits, one in Camino and one in MarginFi. Now, all these dApps you should be pretty familiar with. Drift has a point system. I don't think it relates to borrowers and lending though. MarginFi we know has points. Camino we know has points. Solend does not. Lulo is peer-to-peer -peer lending and it does not have points as far as I'm aware. By the way, Lulo is a dApp which did its fundraising just before the FTX collapse in 2022. And they're actually the same team behind FlexLend. They didn't find, I guess, the perfect product market fit with peer-to-peer -peer lending. And they've opened up with FlexLend. And FlexLend definitely has product market fit. And then we've got Mango. Now, there'll be no point system as far as I'm aware because Mango, it launched in 2021. Now, let's go ahead and let's actually put in some money. So I'm going to go with USDC. And obviously at the moment, MarginFi has the highest rate. The minimum amount you need to do is 100, as you can see, because they're paying for all of the, the fees to go from one dApp to the other. So they want to try and move this in a way where, you know, people aren't doing $5 or $10 or something like that. So we'll go with 100 or we can go with a little bit more. That's fine. And then we just need to select the dApp that we're after. We can, of course, just create the order like this. And it's just going to pick the best one. So we'll just confirm. And you can see this routed to MarginFi. Now I'm going to show you setting up home base. So we know that this went straight to MarginFi because it had the highest yield. I might remove Solent, I remove Lulo, and I remove Mango. So I've got these three options because I know they're doing points. Don't think Drift is doing points in this way, but maybe they give some sort of points in the future and people like points. We're going to go with Max and then we're going to click on these filters here. And then we're going to make sure that we're always returning to Camino if the yield goes low. So let's say if it goes below 5%, then we want it to go to, we can either choose back into our wallet or we can select another dApp. So we're going to go with Camino. This means when we put through this order, this is of course is going to be routed to MarginFi. If MarginFi suddenly has a huge amount of liquidity and this goes down to 4.8%, and maybe Camino is even less, maybe Camino is four. Well, then it's going to be routed to Camino anyway, because maybe we're more bullish on Camino's points as opposed to margin five points. And that's not my personal preference or anything like that. Just letting you know how you could think you may reverse it. You may change it to margin five. We'll click create order and then we will confirm. Now, sometimes the first time when actually entering these dApps, you may have to pay some soul just to open like an account within that dApp. That is normal. Otherwise, at present, FlexLend is not taking any fees. And as far as I'm aware, by chatting to Maurice from the team, they're not even discussing fees. At the moment, it's about 
getting more users, which I definitely agree with. So this yield, we're getting all of this yield and we're not sharing our points with them either. Everything is in margin five, but we can see this one here will return to our Camino homeroom if it dips below 5%. Now this DAP has only been out for a few months, so they're still shipping more and more features. As an example, this is 5%, but we don't know which homeroom it will go to. It's all based on memory for now, but I don't think it's gonna take long to ship those things. Now let's go up to the top and click on points. And this is the points breakdown. So last night I did a $100 deposit into Camino Finance and that's earning currently 1.06 points. However, my wallet points is higher because I have a small liquidity position open with Camino Finance. So we can see and work out how many points are actually in our wallet and how many we're getting directly from Flex Lend. Either way, all of these points, they belong to us. Once again, Flex Lend is not taking any of our points. So here, we're basically farming points and farming the best yield. With MarginFi, the protocol doesn't tell us our point system, so we can see this, but we don't know how many points we're actually getting. And with Solend, as far as I'm aware, there is no point system, but we would still see the deposits here. We can do this with another token as well, so let's go with USDT, and we can see at the moment on Solend, it's crazy. So, I mean, it's a bit of a no-brainer. There's clearly a crazy demand there. Once again, let's say if it goes below 6%, I want it to go back to Camino, create order, and you can see I have to pay a little bit of Sol because this is the first time that I'm opening a USDT account with Solend. So we'll click confirm, and now everything's active and we're earning this rate. We come up to our point system and we can see it here. I'm unsure on the delay of the point system, but it's not real time. So what about other tokens? Well, let's say we had some Jupe or maybe some Jito Sol. We can see which has the best lend rates. Maybe we can check out some Bonk here. There's not a huge amount here. My suggestion for Bonk, unless you really wanted to actually lend it out, would be, of course, to stake it. But let's go and have a look at Jupe. Almost no demand here, which would be my expectation, of course. But what about Sol? So Sol is earning very, very decently on Camino and then not so decently everywhere else. Now, personally, of course, at this rate, I'm just gonna go and stake it with validator.com and I would earn more, but nevertheless, I'm gonna add this just so you can see it and confirm. And we'll see in a second that this will go to Camino. There it is, just like that. Now let's quickly go over some more information up the top here, click on this button, and we can see the dApps that are currently being used. Of course, these top five, these have the most amount of product market fit. They've all been open sourced and audited. Lulu has low market share at the moment, but maybe they grow this in the future. C ratio means collateralization ratio, and a higher number is good but we can come up to the top here and we can actually select a token. So looking at Camino quickly, there's 1.4 million in deposits and there's 1.1 million in borrows. So therefore the collateralization ratio is quite low. You can see the rates are quite high because of the fact that there's not a huge buffer in this liquidity pool. And then if you click on it, you can see a lot more information like what's actually in this liquidity pool. But what we immediately care about, this information isn't too important for us. All we really want is a decent APR. And when we look at USDT, we can see why the borrow rates are very, very high on Solend. The collateralization ratio is only 1.07. So of course you get this high APR. However, you may not be able to withdraw the USDT if all of a sudden there's not the liquidity there for you to withdraw. In which case you'd have to wait for other people to come in with more money so that you could then withdraw. And that just relates to this collateralization ratio. But at the same time, you could also bookmark this and work out what is the cheapest place to borrow because you can lend with FlexLend, but you cannot borrow. So with one wallet, you might be trying to get yield with USDC and a different wallet address, you might have some GitoSol and you might think, I wanna go and borrow some USDT, in which case you can work it all out in just a second. Also at the top, we've got Docs and we have Telegram. Now, if we come on down to the bottom, we may decide we want to withdraw. So we can click withdraw and then just confirm the transaction and it's removed from that dApp. Once again, there are no fees, even Flexland pays the gas fees. Finally, if you own a Saga phone, go and download their dApp from the dApp store and use it on your Saga. It's always good to be an early adopter of things on Saga phones. And of course, any feedback, give it to the team. Now to end with a couple of strategies. If you don't have a lot of USDC or USDT, but you want some high yields, maybe just go for whatever is printing the most. At the moment, that would be Solend. However, if you've got a little bit more, maybe a couple of thousand dollars worth, and you're pretty confident that your points will equate to something, then maybe go for the protocols that are farming points, such as MarginFi and Camino. But they, of course, are just my opinions. They are not financial advice.
That's all for this tutorial. We'll catch you in the next one.